Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 here doing power rankings for SEC Hoops. It's Monday, January 23rd. We always start at the bottom. South Carolina remains our number 14 team, which it has been all year. The Gamecocks consistently in the 200s and all the computer rankings. No need to really go into that anymore. Uh, Carolina at one and five. Number 13, the Ole Miss Rebels. Uh, who just have had a brutal schedule or one and six in the SEC now under 500 at nine and 10 and are one and eight against the first two quads, Blake. Yeah. Um, not ideal. So, I mean, look, this, the bottom of the SEC is really starting to kind of show Separate. itself, I think. Um, because some years were like, well, you know, not real sure, but I, I do feel like, I don't know. More recently, I feel like we're like, all right, these feel like the bottom four teams. And I think we're kind of at that point this season where I think you've got a pretty clear idea of who the bottom four are. And and just based on the schedule, like I said, and let's keep this in mind, right? Like LSU has played a brutal schedule. Like, I mean, it's kind of one of those things where they just have not, it hasn't kind of let up. Mississippi State's sort of the same way, right? Ole Miss, I mean, these are some of the bottom teams. And but it's just like the schedule doesn't help. And I, you know, these teams are probably maybe somewhat better than just the record would suggest on a few of these, maybe, but it just kind of is what it is. And, um, you know, you got to win games at some point. And again, South Carolina's not winning games. Oh, this is not winning games. And again, I think it's pretty clear who the, who the next two are in this group are just not winning games right now either. So. Yeah. And look, um, Schedules have got a lot to do with this. I'm looking in the bottom three teams in our countdown have had the the number one, two, and three schedules in the league so far. Well, yeah, because LSU is in there too. Actually, South Carolina has had the, let's see, sixth toughest schedule according to Ken Palm. So there's a theme here with the next few teams. LSU at – 12, Mississippi State at 11. Both have played brutal schedules. Both have trouble scoring. And frankly, both have been disappointments. We thought LSU had a chance to be a much better team than it's been. Um, Computers didn't like the Tigers based on that out-of-conference schedule, which was pretty pathetic, actually. And now the conference schedule has been (laughs) really tough for LSU. The, The Tigers just haven't been able to score. Yeah, no, they haven't. And I mean, again, it's just not, it's not helped either because I mean, look at the teams they played, right? It's just, we said it was going to be a gauntlet, but really defensively, look at the teams they played. They played Tennessee, they played Auburn, they played Alabama, you know, they played A&M, um, you know, Kentucky, as we said, slipping a little bit defensively, but still not a bad defensive team. Um, you know, Florida, I think the strength of Florida is, is their defense, right? So it is one of those things where it's like, I think it's easy just to, in Arkansas. I mean, they, they played Arkansas and, you know, Arkansas is a team that they won that game, but that's a good defensive team. So I, I really, when you look at it, I mean, it's, I think we can knock LSU and certainly they've had their issue scoring, but when you really think about it, like they've played the toughest defensive teams in the league, I guess, outside of who Mississippi state, like, they've played all the toughest defensive teams in the league right now. So yeah, I mean, look, like I said, you got to win games and it's going to put you here if you don't in this spot, but I don't know. I just think it's that the schedule is brutal, but we've been talking about that for two months of how brutal the schedule was going to be. And um, again, doesn't ease up because they go to Arkansas on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's not ideal for the Tigers. So, you know, else the schedule hasn't eased up Mississippi state. Listen to this, Blake. Uh, who did Chris Jans tick off? Because this has been state's schedule. Okay, after Wednesday, when in which state's got Alabama on the road, which is the last thing it needed, it will have played Alabama twice. It will have played Tennessee twice. Um, would have played Auburn once. That's five games against the three best teams in the league. I guess, spoiler alert, but nobody's going to be surprised by that. Um, a, a game at Georgia, and really then we break in the schedule. Um, Ole Miss at home, which it won, and then Florida at home was 
a relative break. It lost that one. By the way, after that, State gets TCU, which is a Sweet 16 or Elite Eight caliber team, and then it eases up. The rest of the schedule gets much easier uh, from there on, and that's State's chance to maybe make a run. Let's not forget, State does have a couple of quad one wins and no losses against quad three or four, which is why you're still seeing Mississippi State get some votes in bracket matrix, not a lot, but a few. Uh, they're not in the bracket matrix's field of 68. I'm guessing the voters that are watching that aren't paying attention to the one in six league record. But anyway, that is a long winded way of saying state has done some things at times that make you think they're a tournament team. But this welcome to the SEC, Chris Jans portion of the schedule has just been beyond brutal for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I mean, LSU, Mississippi say like, I'll say it again, like, I don't think they're bad teams. They've just played tough schedules, and they have some clear weaknesses. <laughs> and unfortunately, the schedule they played has been against teams who can take advantage of those weaknesses. And their weakness, both of them, is what? It's scoring the ball consistently. And they just happen to have played defensively some of the best teams in the league. And it just has not, has not helped. It's not worked out. And like I said, I, I think right now it's very clear that these are the bottom – four teams, but you know, I wouldn't be shocked in Mississippi state once they get the schedule ease up a little bit, moves up a few spots, right. Can maybe yeah. get out of this. Um, it's, I don't know if LSU can or not, because I think that they are just, their schedule does not let up literally until February the 18th. Like in all honesty, I, I don't there until February the 18th. I don't know that they, they're going to be the underdog in every game they play probably until then. And so, it's just a brutal, brutal setup for LSU. But Mississippi State, I think, is is better than the one and six. They just have a lot of limitations scoring wise, and they've just played some good mm. defensive teams, and that's been the problem. And so, yeah, I I don't know. These two teams just got the the bad luck of the draw here um, when it comes to these these schedules. So, I don't see LSU, Ole Miss, or South Carolina getting out of that Wednesday night SEC tournament game. Do you? Um. I mean, South Carolina. I could see Miss, State no. doing it, but I, LSU, not, not LSU, Ole Miss, or Carolina. LSU, like I said, with the schedule, I just don't think that there's a. I just don't think there's a way out for LSU because the schedule is just too brutal. Um, and again, it it doesn't let up for a month. <laughs> like, it's just it's just not ideal. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I think LSU will be too far behind at that point. Mississippi State, I think, can get out of there, but it's like if they get out of there, who replaces them? I'm gonna be Arkansas because they're gonna get out of their slump. Missouri, yeah. I don't – they're going to get out of theirs probably as long as Kobe Brown gets back fine and they're going to start winning some games again. I mean, really, we can say that, but I think your only options at that point become Georgia or Vanderbilt. But I don't – I'm telling you, with the way those two teams play, I don't know that they drop back that far. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess we could say that about Mississippi State. I just don't know who replaces them, to be honest with you. So Yeah, I, I mean, it's – the schedule gets easier for State. It gets much easier. Um, Two games against South Carolina to come. Um, two games against Missouri. That's not easy. A game against LSU. That's at home. Arkansas. That's on the road. Um, I mean, you know, it's got a game with, with Vandy on the road to end the season. Look, it, it, it's not this preponderance for state of of top three SEC teams, which you know, Alabama. Auburn, Tennessee are going to be five of this team's first eight SEC games. So, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, moving on, Georgia really had a chance to separate this weekend, but did not in an 85-82 loss to Vanderbilt. So, consequently, we put Georgia at 10 and Vandy at 9. I, I did not expect to see Vandy at 9 after losing Liam Robbins, but here we are. Yeah, I don't really have a lot on these two because I don't really think there's a lot to separate them. We talked about their game. I think that was – you see our previous video, we talked about the game they played against each other. I don't – I just don't see a lot of separation right now probably between these two. I think they're both better than people will give them credit for. Vandy keeps everything close. Georgia, I think, is still a, a good team. They're just maybe going to have some of those games that – like this one where, you know, you just get a Vanderbilt team that keeps everything close and they happen to be the ones that make shots down the stretch. And so, yeah, but I mean – you know, Georgia's got some tough games coming up. Um, so, yeah, I, I just – right now I don't see a lot of separation between these two. 
Betting $11 to win 10 stinks with Bro Throw You Bet 10 to win 10. It lets you bet in all 50 states because it is not the house. Betters have a fair chance at winning. It is the only sports betting platform that doesn't take a cut of every bet. No need to deposit money, no minimum bets, no need to connect your bank account. Betters pay each other directly in a hassle free sign up process that gets you in the action in seconds. Go to brothrow.com forward slash SE14. Once you're there, join our private group. We'll let you in and have some fun with this there. Okay, the number eight team in the countdown, the Florida Gators, who are four and three overall in the SEC, 11 and eight overall, overall, and one and six against quad one, two and two against quad two, and then eight and zero oh between quads three and four. But this is the interesting thing. The computers continue to see Florida as an NCAA tournament caliber team. Ken Pomeroy, 41. Bart Torvik, 41. Jeff Sagarin, 36. BPI, 35. The net rankings, which matters most, and that is going to be based on strength of big wins, 45. But the predictive computers continue to see Florida as a 9 or 10 level seed. I, I don't know that I buy that, but it's kind of interesting. Well, when you don't have a terrible loss, you're always in the conversation, as we say every year. And – Florida does not have a terrible loss yet. And um, so that keeps them right there in the conversation, I think. And now, as we said, it's a matter of kind of getting to the schedule, the meat of their schedule, where they're going to have the most opportunity for the upside wins versus facing a, a South Carolina team on Wednesday. They can completely destroy their chances at, you know, a tournament picture just by losing that game. Because you want to talk about something that sticks out like a sore thumb. Look at Kentucky's uh, numbers. You see that that quad four loss. Well, yeah, that's South Carolina um, chiming in there. So, I mean, that's that's it for Florida. Like I said, I, they, they don't have any bad losses. They've lost a lot of games relative, I guess, to, you know, they've lost eight of their, what, 19, but don't have a bad loss yet, but really don't have a defining win either. And I guess you'd kind of look at the Missouri one a little bit, but that one still right now is probably not where they need it to be. So, yeah, I, I think they're still firmly in the conversation. And as we said, they're they're one of the more improved teams in the SEC. They've played a lot better over the past several weeks now. And um, just a matter of how they how they perform entering the, the toughest part of their schedule uh, after the South Carolina game. Next up, this is where we get into the NCAA tournament bubble. Uh, Arkansas at number seven. Bracket Matrix has got Arkansas is a middling seven seed right now, despite that two and five record. Arkansas one and four against quad one, two and two against quad two, and a combined 10 and 0 against quads three and four. Arkansas, of course, has had two very significant injuries, but the Razorbacks starting to play a little bit better, Blake. Well, here's the deal with Arkansas it's the race to finish above 500 in the SEC. Like that's because otherwise, what do you have to lean on, right? Um, because their best win is who? San Diego State, probably. Beyond that, what does that look yeah. like? You know, and so I think that they've got, like I said, they're two and five right now. I think I told you my prediction before Saturday. I said, I think they're going to wind up being five and five because I think they'll beat LSU at home. I think they'll beat AM at home. I think they'll win at South Carolina. That gets them to five and five. Then, you know, you start to figure some things out from there. But I think it's going to be interesting if we look up with Arkansas that, you know, I think it's going to be interesting because I think they have to go at least 10 and 8. I don't know that 9 and 9 gets it done unless, now let's let's factor this in, unless you're talking about they beat Alabama and Tennessee on the road or something. Um, then maybe things get more interesting. And we got a long way to go to have that conversation. But I'm thinking right now, if you're an Arkansas fan, you're looking ahead. That's the thing I think you're thinking about. It's just, yeah, we just need to get to that. I think you need to get to 10 and 8. It's just my projection as of yeah, right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing, I mean, best wins on Ken Palm. San Diego State, 27. Oklahoma, 40. Bradley, 85. Missouri, 63. Uh, of course, Missouri would be considered a better win than the Ken Palm rating because um, Missouri's big wins. Oklahoma is is 11 and 8. The, the Big 12, the whole Big 12 could Frankly, go to the NCAA I think they should. It won't happen, I think they're but, good enough to put the whole whole squad in, in my opinion. But yeah, I can't not. see the committee doing that. But we'll see. That'd be neat. Um, 
But anyway, yeah, I mean, Arkansas, the computers like the Razorbacks really more than you look at the resume and it jumps out to you, if that makes sense. Yep. So, I, again, I think it's still just that. That, to me, feels like the magic number. But we can say that, understanding that, you know, there's still a lot to be determined and that number can change. But I think the strength of the SEC, if you want to feel comfortable about things, you know, beat the teams you should beat. We always say that. Don't rack up bad losses, which right now, let's use a bad loss. Um, you know, but I mean, beyond that, I think you just, you, you don't, you want to take care of business against the team. You should take it bears against, but you got to find those wins against quality competition. And I think that's where Arkansas will have their opportunities given what their schedule is like. And that's again, getting to that number is not going to be easy yeah. when you look at their schedule. So yeah, yeah. That, that, that they're, they're probably the most fascinating team right now. I think from a NCAA tournament perspective in the league, because of the way they've started an SEC play but also knowing that they have the opportunities to get them where they need to go and maybe nine and nine gets them in. I don't know. I just look at the strength of the sec. They do have a tough schedule the rest of the way. So maybe nine would be enough. Cause you're talking about getting seven somewhere in there. Um, but then of course you have the, the sec tournament too. So um, we're playing what ifs cause that's what we do this time of year, but just something to think about. Well, here's the problem for Arkansas. It's also opportunity, but you, you would like to get some of those tough games in Fayetteville Baylor away. Texas A&M, get them twice, so one of those is on the road. Kentucky, away. Alabama, away. Tennessee, away. Actually, they get to Kentucky twice, so you, you do have a chance. It's so hard to win on the road. So maybe their best chances are Kentucky at home. They got a lot of opportunity. They, they, yeah. do, they do, although right now neither of those wins are, are, are huge move-the-needle games. I mean, look, if, if they get – if they get one at Baylor, Alabama, Tennessee, good luck there on those latter two, then maybe you have a chance. But it's it's a double-edged sword. Arkansas needs big wins. Um, most of those opportunities for those that will move the needle are going to be away from home. So if the Razorbacks pull them off, the, the rewards will come. All right, next up, we've got our only tie in the countdown between AM and Missouri. I've got Missouri higher than AM based on the strength of resume across the season. I think you've got A&M higher than I do based on recent play. The computers would agree with you. All of them have A&M higher than Missouri. Um, problem for A&M, 1-3 and three against quad one, 2-1 and one against quad two, and then quad three and quad four, 10-2 and two total with a loss in each one of those. Missouri does not have a loss outside of quad one. Missouri can't play defense, so the predictive computers like a and more. The net likes Missouri more, and I, I leaned on the net in this one because Missouri just has accomplished more, but if you want to tell me a and the better team, I, I can't necessarily tell you that you are wrong because you probably aren't at this point. Well, I mean, look, we have to look at the whole picture, but I think we also have to understand that beyond a certain point, you're looking at a different team, and I think that's the case with A&M. Beyond December 20th, losing to Wofford, I think you're looking right. at a different team. And so, yes, we can look at everything that happened before then and say, wow, that should never have happened. But I think you're looking at a different team. I just think they're playing a lot better now. They are much different. They're doing a lot of things well. Like I said, I think the Kentucky game, I did not come out of that game questioning my opinion on AM. Um, I just thought Kentucky made some big plays. I thought AM gave it their best shot outside of, you know, missing a few shots here, there couldn't hit a three turn the ball over a little bit too much, but that's a road game in the sec. And so I, yeah, I, I haven't really changed my opinion on A&M a whole lot, to be honest with you. And I think I would put them ahead of Missouri right now, just because I think they're playing better than Missouri. And um, yeah, I've, I didn't really hesitate on that. one. So even as the, the Dennis Gates, connoisseur i did not hesitate putting a m ahead of missouri right now so we've got kentucky at four um i think based partially on the assumption that kentucky is getting some things right and of course the potential kentucky on bracket matrix is a monday morning out of the ncaa tournament field but i think it's the first team out um look either the wildcats will will play something close to their potential, in which case the NCAA tournament will take care of itself or they won't, in which case it gets very interesting. But I'm betting on Kentucky 
to be maybe not the team we thought Kentucky would be coming into the season, but at least an NCAA tournament team. If, if not, I'll be – I mean, I, I shouldn't say anything with Kentucky surprises me at this point, given the journey the Cats have taken us through the last year. But I, I just don't I – w- I wouldn't bet against Kentucky – getting to the NC tournament and maybe making a nice run here in the SEC in, in the, the last month and a half. For the first time this season, they've shown us consistency and they've done it in three games here. Like you look at some of the games they won, you know, winning streak and all that. Right. I mean, this is, they beat North Florida, Bellarmine, uh, Michigan and Yale, right. Four games in a row. They won that back in November, but like, this is different because I think they went on the road to Tennessee they beat up solid Georgia team. Now they give Texas A&M their first SEC loss. They're just playing better. Their their approach is different, which, as I keep saying, is important. Case Wallace is kind of taking the keys, and that I think is the the difference. And you know, as I said, I, I wouldn't be shocked if they lost to Vanderbilt on Tuesday night because the way Vanderbilt plays, it's going to be a close game. We can say that now. That's our prediction. But I just think Kentucky is they're doing a lot. They're doing some things better, and I think because of how their their approach has changed, that gives me way more optimism that they have figured it out because they're not just doing the same old thing and expecting a different result. They're doing things differently in these big games now, and they're playing better defense. They're finding a rhythm offensively, and all that combined, yeah, I think they're, they're certainly headed in the right direction. And look, we were all right to question <laughs> – because I said, I'm like, how do you come back from losing to South Carolina? A historically bad team, which, by the way, that's playing out as well. Um, yes. How do you come back from that? Well, they did. They decided to change things, and that was the only way it was going to happen. And so give them credit. They, they've they changed some things. They've come out with a different mentality in a lot of these games, and it's paid off in three straight wins. Okay, really the only place to go at three was Auburn. 16-3 and three overall, 6-1 and one in the league, but just one quad one win. Auburn 1-2 and two against quad one, 7-1 against quad two, and then 8-0, and 4-0 oh, um, oh each against quad three and four. And I don't know what else to say about the Tigers. They're a solid five seed on bracket matrix right now, and that seems about right. They're playing better offensively, and that's why I, I hope people start to give them a little credit for that because – I don't know. I probably repeated myself on them, but they're just, they're playing better on that side of the floor. And that was always going to be the key. I, I don't think they're going to be, you know, they're not going to have the upside of an Alabama or anyone like that, but they still are playing better on that side. And they're a little bit more consistent now and they're getting contributions from a lot of different guys. And that's important on this team because it's not structured the way it was last year. And so, yeah, I, I just really like the way Auburn's playing right now. And, um, you know, they're one, too, that I think when you see the way their SEC schedule plays out, not saying it's easy, but it, it it's, it's set up a lot better based on how this season has gone than a lot of other teams because they don't really have those stretches where it's just like, oh, my gosh, what are you going to do? Um, they Theirs tends to be set up a little bit better, I think. And, and look, that's not a it's not an Auburn Auburn thing, right? Like, that's just the way these teams have played this season, and it just kind of happens to fall that way. But nice six and one start, one of the best defensive teams in the league, one of the better defensive teams in the country, how they play on that side of the floor, but they're getting better offensively. They, they may still have some of those just because they don't have that high level, you know, offense. Maybe we've seen in some of those recent teams, but they're, they're getting better on that side. And yeah, they're, they're, they're 16 and three. I mean, it feels like we haven't mm-hmm. even talked a lot about Auburn. This they're 16 and three. Yeah. That just shows you what Bruce Pearl's done there. So. Okay. Top two teams have been this way for a while. Tennessee two, Alabama one. That's the same order we've had them at. Let's run through the quads. Tennessee three and one against quad one, Alabama six and two, quad two, Alabama four and zero, oh, Tennessee five and two, quad three, Alabama four and zero, oh, Tennessee two and zero, oh, quad four, Alabama three and zero, oh, Tennessee six and zero. Oh. The computers have every one of them got Tennessee and Alabama what ranked are the two or three. Doing man, I I'm sorry, Chris. Can you are, are please you explain to me? Is still one. Can you please explain to me in the net rankings? And I, this is not a knock on Tennessee because I mean all we're doing is just exchanging number two and number three here, right? We're not. I'm not saying push Tennessee down to 15 or anything, but with their resume, the way it's set up, I just don't understand how. And, and people are asking me this on Twitter because I put out the the thing every Sunday on like the net rankings, like for the week. 
I just don't get, I guess, how Tennessee is still ahead of Alabama. I'm just, I'm asking this from a knowledge standpoint. Like, I'm not saying, I, I just don't get it. I mean, I, it, it I, makes no sense to me based on the quads. It must be something on the fringes. Of yeah, the there's quads. more to it. Yeah. Because Al- I mean, Alabama's 10 and 0 against the first two quads, Tennessee is 8 and 3. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't get it. But I mean, again, computers, I'm sure it's always the computers, man. It's just, it's always the computers. Uh, no, I, I'm just I'm bringing that up because a lot of people I know are frustrated. Alabama fans are frustrated by that on Twitter, but they've had some nice back and forth with Tennessee fans. I'm just asking the question because I don't get it either. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean it is, but <laughs> we're talking about we don't understand the difference between the number two and number three teams in the net rankings. Like, so that shows you how good Tennessee and Alabama have been this season. So, yeah, they're they're both elite teams. They're both Final Four type teams, in my opinion. And yeah, I mean, we, we pretty much said everything we can say about these two teams right now, given where they are. And, you know, Tennessee, I think the biggest boost having Josiah Jordan James back Alabama, uh, just having so many options um, to be able to score the ball. And there's just remember too, it was just sad and bring up in our other, they still haven't allowed more than 69 points in an sec game, the first seven games. So, and they beat everybody by double digits. Remarkable. Remarkable stuff. Yeah. So, all right. Predictions coming up. Best way to get those, hit that subscribe button. We got baseball content on the way. We got all kinds of football content we're cranking out. So, we are the place you want to be for SEC football, baseball, and basketball. We cover all those with equal passion. Again, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. That helps us get noticed. He's Blake Lovell. I'm Chris Lee. We'll see you again soon at Southeastern 14.